In this video, we're just gonna take a quick look at the chords for Wild Horses from the Rolling Stones. It's a great uh, kind of classic acoustic ballad in the key of G, although it sounds very minorish at times, but it is uh, in G, except for one little solo section that's briefly in the key of C. It changes, but it then comes right back. So let's just dive right into it. So here's the uh, intro section. It's just G and A minor, it goes like this. that G and then kicks it off into the verse and I should also note that this is recorded originally in an open G tuning but we're just gonna play it in standard tuning so it's gonna sound a little different you know the only way to get it the exact is to play in that open G tuning where you tune it so that when you strum the guitar so if it's sounding like that it sounds like a G chord but we're not gonna dive into that we're just gonna keep it nice and easy so here's the verse part which is also a solo towards the end of the song. They just go through it one time as a solo. But here it is, uh, the first time is the verse. It starts with B minor. Now you can play a regular B minor bar chord, or if you wanna make it easier, just play the middle four so you don't have to actually bar down. Gonna make it even easier than that, the way I wrote it out is B minor seven. I'll often uh, show that as a way, instead of playing regular B minor, um, sounds a little thicker, more colorful, but you can replace pretty much any B minor with a B minor seven. It's a lot, a lot easier. You get those nice open strings to ring it out. So, so it starts off with that. It goes to a G, and it just does it again. Then we're climbing up, A minor, C, and then a real quick C D. Two strums each. And then the same thing here, but we're reversing. And that helps bring it back to the beginning of the verse. Now, the second time, it doesn't do that quick D, C, because we're going to then go into the chorus and that would make it a little awkward. So they just hang in the D. So the second time, we're hanging there. And then we go off to the chorus A minor. times of that and now for F we can play a full bar if we want you can just play the middle four of that or we could do what I have written in there easiest way to play F just these three right in a row first fret second string second fret third string and third fret fourth string just like stairs right like there and when you go from that to C you can use uh, your first finger what I call a pivot fingers to leave that in the same spot between two chords. So rather than take it off, just leave it down. Good way to practice that, just back and forth, keeping that steady, or keep it down. Let's end up with. And that's the chorus. And then the last part is the solo section that happens after the second chorus, and it changes to the key of C just for four measures and comes back to G. And that is just F, C, two times, except to get a little closer to that sound that they have, we can throw this G on top, uh, third fret, first string. Um, so you've got the, that same F that we did before, and you just throw that third fret on top. That's called an F add nine. But still, just, just like the B minor seven, just a little more colorful to sound, still just basically, you know, thought of as an F. And then C, we can keep that same note down, and that's still a C. It's just a different way of playing it, and that kind of glues the two chords together, gives a little more colorful sound. So we've got that two times. And then it goes, and then two measures G, just rest on that. And then it goes right back into the chorus. And those are all the parts. So my approach to learning songs 
Uh, if you've already seen some of my videos so far, is I like to really focus on just learning each section of a song and really trying to memorize it. If you want to really play the song, you know, as best you can, you got to really just memorize each part and then hone your ear in to get better at hearing where and when the parts happen throughout the song. So rather than just reading through a sheet all the way through trying to follow along, which can be actually sometimes confusing because it's if you lose your spot, it's just so much going on. I mean, it's nice if you've got lyrics with it, if, if you do sing, can be handy. But if we're not singing, I think it's much better to have just the parts right there. And if you want to really nail the song, even if you are singing, it's good to just memorize it and it's best, I think, to see each section and see what's in it um, rather than just seeing multiple sheets with all the lyrics all mixed around. So, so do your best to uh, learn each part and uh, take it from there.